Hi, this is Simon with Trade and Perform Coaching, and I'm going to try and do a brief uh, trade review of today's action. Everyone knows the market shot straight up this afternoon. No genius there. So um, I have had several requests to make this a little bit simpler than what I've been making it, and so I'm going to see if I can't do that. Uh, and then for those who want more complex um, questions answered, they can contact me directly. So we'll give that a shot and see if that works. So here's the thing when you have a zone right a zone is resistance a resistance if it comes in from below right and it's resistance until it's broken it's support if we come in from above like this it's support until it's no longer support that and that would be when it's broken okay and that's the most basic rule I have with that and so if we haven't traded above a zone like this morning right if we look here so when we get to the open in the morning, right, we open inside this zone and people seem to have confusion. And here's here's the rule with that. If we don't trade above the zone, okay, it's resistance. That's all there is to it. Until we get above it, and once we get above it, then it's support. That's how it works, pure and simple. Um, my trading, I try to stick to the highest odds trades and I tend to take the zones on first touch. Does it work every time? No. It's a high odds trade, meaning I know that I have odds of being successful repeatedly, but it doesn't mean that it's going to work every single time. And occasionally, there's exceptions to the rule. Sometimes I say don't trade this area. Today's a perfect example. After the Fed came out, I put in all kinds of warnings. Okay, One of the warnings was, keep in mind, once Fed is out, the market will generally not care about zones. And that's when you get these zones busted. It does not matter how well you placed your trade. You needed humongo ridiculous stops to make the trade work, which is exactly why I don't like to trade, it particularly immediately following the Fed news. I just don't. I could be wrong, but I think I'm right. Uh, and I think this bears me out. Secondly, we have examples of where, of where last time we had a Fed day, Look, the morning was pretty tradable, right? We had a decent range up and down, but after the Fed came out in just the minutes prior, right, we had nice rotations down lower, and then we drove up. But here's the key to this. From here to here, this is 1642 down to 1634. Uh, not even uh, 10 points, right? This is a very manageable area, and, and the way I approach the market is I try to put on as much size as my account will allow me to do. Okay, meaning... As much size that no one trade will do significant damage to my account, but I have a lot of leverage in, more than most people do. So I want very specific pinpointing trades in an environment that gives me a reasonable chance of letting that trade work out. This environment affords that to me. This one does not. Okay, I cannot control my risk in this quick enough. It's too hard. I can't pinpoint it. I'm not good enough. Maybe some traders are. I'm not, and I can live with that, right? So I want to be careful in this environment. And if you look, interestingly enough, today how it played out when I came into trade this morning. Okay, so the first thing I was looking at, if we uh, minimize this here a bit, was I was looking at how when I get up in the morning, I kind of just come in and I want to draw some trend lines, right? And when I look at the trend lines, the majority of the longer term trend lines, everything, and I mean everything is pointed up. The easier trade right now is long. I don't have to think about it or whether we're in a bubble or not in a bubble. As a day trader, that's not our job to figure out. We don't even care, right? All I care about is the next eight ticks, maybe 12 or 16 ticks. But I don't care about where the market's going. I don't have any fundamental argument with it. If you want to take the market to zero tomorrow, that's great. I would like an entry, but other than that, that's I don't care. You know, I don't care other than for the general health of our of our economic system, and for you know corporations in general and for people in general. I'd rather the market go up and than down. The majority of people benefit from that. But for me personally, the market goes down 100 points or up 100 points, it makes zero difference to me. Zero, because all I want is eight ticks out of it, and I usually can find those eight ticks. And then the other concept that I constantly need to stress, I'm trying to build my trading account. Even today, I'm trying to build my trading account. And all I need is two trades that afford me one to two points apiece daily 
and repeat that and increase my trade size. I don't need more trades. Okay, that I got a trade like today is awesome. That is totally cool. But I don't need more than that. And I can make literally hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions, off of that type of trading philosophy. And I show people and I teach people how to do it every single day. And it, and it can be done. Okay, so there's my focus. So the next thing I'm looking at is, well, if I wanted to have an easy trade, right, over the last couple of days, what's been the easiest way to make money here the last couple of weeks? Up, long. So if you're nervous about stepping in front of the market, don't. But wait till it pulls back to a zone and gives a very nice setup, and then take that setup. That's all you have to do. So all you have to do is wait for the market, anyone in the last couple of days, to come back in and give you a nice entry. And if you don't get the entry, just don't trade it. You know that's the simple answer when we're trading when we're in an up environment. Just wait for the market to give you a nice entry in the direction you want to trade in, the prevailing direction. And you can ignore all the shorts that you want to ignore. There's so many ways to trade this in an easy fashion, right? Take the easiest route. The market is never broken. It's just giving you opportunities in different ways in different places. And it's up to us as traders to simply adapt. And we don't have to adapt a lot, just a little bit. For me, I like taking the shorts, okay? I like taking the counter. Why? Because I know the gross majority of time, I've been trading this for a long time, over 18 years. I know that it will return to a two-way market. ES always does. It's just the nature. If it doesn't, I'll change. But so far, over 18 years, it's always returned to that nature. So the other thing that I looked at when I came in this morning, right, <clears throat> was um, a couple of interesting things. But the thing that stood out to me most was as we were approaching the open, we had this nasty little sell-off in ES. And could have it been a head fake? Yes, it could have been a head fake. But... It just kind of seemed to me like after watching it for a couple of minutes and then the other key was I was watching NQ and NQ didn't take off. And I said this morning in the pre-market uh, trade prep video that I sent out to my clients, watch NQ, see how it sets up, see where the opportunity is there and take advantage of it. And um, NQ never took off in the morning. And while it took a while, it took a good 40 minutes, almost an hour to get my two points, right? Um, and I even brought this stop in a little bit because I did not want to take a large loss again today. Not a large loss, but even a normal loss I didn't want to take. You know, it wears you down mentally when you keep getting stopped on your high odds trades. And you do get tired and you start making mistakes from a trading decision standpoint. And you're like, well, uh, you know, maybe, I, you know, just doubt runs into your head. And that's when you really have to buckle up and go back and look at your spreadsheets and confirm that your edge is truly your edge. Now, going back to all of this. If you'll look at um, this little downtrend, we were never never able to recover. NQ was never able to get above Globex highs, and it set up a very nice short. So we were within an uptrend, and we had a little downtrend going. But I certainly didn't think going into Fed we were just going to roll over and fall apart. And uh, people who do tend to be looking at larger fundamental pictures, right, and applying them to the day time frame, and it doesn't matter, folks. The day time frame is the day time frame. Whether it goes up or down, all we're interested in is eight ticks. Who cares whether the market's going to go to, you know, 1800 or 1500 I really don't care as long as they give me a trade. And they will give you a trade somewhere in between those two points. Markets don't go in straight lines. Okay, so the last piece, and again, in keeping this simple, right, is I knew that we had a very good chance of popping, and I thought we would pop up. Wasn't sure of it. Wasn't willing to go on a limb and say we're going to pop up, right? But I took the low right here at the top of the zone, 94, took the long, tweeted it out, had a stop right here behind the zone, and my first target, right, which I thought I could attain, a high odds target again, part of the beauty and simplicity of my trading is I have my planned entries, stops, and exits. I'm doing very little thinking. It massively reduces the amount of motions I have in my trading. So... I'm out of half here, and I want to move my stop up to break even prior to the Fed announcement, right? And as you can see, it got nowhere close to my stop right here. And uh, if anything, if I made a mistake anywhere, it was uh, I exited right here. And uh, maybe that was stupid. I don't know. But uh, I certainly left a good chunk of money on the table, right? But that's how, you know, that's how you make your big leaps, right? I had a pretty good-sized position on even with half left. And I got paid really nicely. So 
anyone can do this okay there it's not rocket science but you got to get up early in the morning and take a look and go what am I going to do today what is my trade plan if I'm getting run over short right maybe I only want to look for longs if my longs aren't working maybe I only want to go short what's the prevailing uh, what are the prevailing winds right when you're sailing a ship you got to know am I am I tacking into the wind or am I sailing with the wind one of the two you got to know what your plan is ahead of time before you do it and then you have to be very good at executing it so uh, needless to say the white zones will return starting tomorrow and every day they will be there uh, the trade reviews will be oriented towards keeping it a little bit simpler and towards money management uh, concepts and then I will leave the more complex questions to uh, be asked through email and Twitter and uh, stock twits but uh, my only goal is to help you get positive it's not to say hey look how great my uh, trade plan is I try to be very transparent I publish my trades up front with the stops and the exits and very very few I'd say less than 1% of the people on Twitter actually do that so if you want someone who you know if you want to see a path of what a professional trader looks like and how they build their wealth a successful one at least you're welcome to follow me I hope it helps you I hope that you learn and then the key would be at the end of the day don't go out and chase someone else's trade ideas because whatever you're doing isn't working for a few days right either you really have an edge or you don't and if you don't have an edge going and looking at someone else's edge does you no good because you have to take even when I coach people and teach them how to do what I'm doing they have to take it and make it their own right that's because your mind needs you to line up what your your actions with what it understands in a psychological in a psychological profile so that you're not nervous every time you're taking a trade okay there's a million reasons to find out trading is hard there's a million ways to scare yourself trading and the best way to avoid scaring yourself trading is by building a strong fundamental base built on a making sure you have an edge B making sure you have a plan to execute that edge and third of all consistency okay so that you can correct when there's little areas that are going wrong you can make an easy correction so uh, I hope everyone had a wonderful day my name is Simon uh, the, the trade and perform coaching um, if you have any questions you're welcome to contact me nothing in the video on the uh, Twitter stream or in my blog should be considered trading advice hope everyone had a great night I am tired I'm gonna get some sleep so I can kick some ass tomorrow See you all later, guys. Good night.